one portfolio, they were unloading a fourplex and it, I mean, it was such a good deal. I thought to myself, people need to know that they can find turnkey properties that meet the 1% rule or more. Have you been thinking about investing in Fort Wayne? What are the best areas to invest in Fort Wayne? What does that look like? What's going on guys? It's Noye Dows, local realtor here at Fort Wayne, back at you with another video. I'm gonna touch on the best areas to invest in Fort Wayne. If you've never been here or you're just not familiar with some of the areas that people invest. This is the first time I've left Indiana. We'll talk about Airbnb, some resources, tools to look at. And then lastly, we'll talk about the 1% rule, what that looks like in ways you can invest with turnkey property. Five areas to invest in Fort Wayne. It's pretty widely known here are West Central, North Highland, Williams Woodland, Hogland Masterson, and Pettit Rudisill. These neighborhoods are, many of them are a historical area with historic homes. In Fort Wayne, a lot of these areas are in the 46807 area code. People from Fort Wayne just call it the 07 for short. I draw the attention to West Central and the previous other four neighborhoods because you've seen a lot of activity starting back maybe even 2010 of people moving to those areas. There's been a lot of investment put in those areas to preserve historic homes. You have charming Victorian architecture, Dutch Revival colonial homes, Cape Cod style homes. These homes are fairly old. They're built around about the 1920s and 30s. You can find some as recent as the 1950s. I do want to draw a distinction between Pettit Rudisill, West Central North Highland area, Williams Woodland. Williams Woodland, North Highland, and West Central are centrally located in the downtown area. Rudisill is going more towards the Southeast area. You can find more investment properties in those areas. This is very low hanging fruit because Investor activity in this area, number one, is high. Number two, people can get off-market properties pretty quickly. Or if you're not in Fort Wayne and you're looking to invest in Fort Wayne, if you see homes come up in these areas, they move fairly quickly. The, the good thing about it is there's sort of a movement in the area to revitalize these homes. There have been people, they actually do a tour of homes. Some of these people have put $100,000 into these homes and they're very, they're, they're pretty remarkable. It's in short walking distance to Sweeney Park. There's a lot of different parks uh, down there. You're over there by the summit. There are a lot of different attractions that are in walking distance from downtown Fort Wayne. They have nice local coffee shops. We went over to Fox and Hound last year. Great restaurant. They have a lot of local businesses down there. Very lucrative area. In walking distance to some of the biggest attractions in Fort Wayne. Parkview Field, Promenade Park. You, you can't walk to Promenade Park from there, but it's, it's very close. You can ride your bike down there. You can skate if, you, if you'd like. I wanted to highlight those five areas. Something to note about these areas, not all of these areas. Pettit Rudisill has less restrictions. A lot of the HOAs have restricted new homeowners from renting these properties out. So that's something significant that a lot of people do not know. I brought you to the website AirDNA, which is a great resource tool to find information about current Airbnb and VRBO short-term rental properties in Fort Wayne. And I already zoomed in to downtown Fort Wayne. We're gonna zoom in here, as you can already see from the map. You see Hogland Masterson right here in the southeast right there, West Central's right here. You see all these purple icons which indicate Airbnbs. This is a good way to you know look at what the short-term rental looks like, how much they're charging. Here, we're in 46802. The cool thing about this, you can click on it and it'll take you straight to the Airbnb website, show you what it looks like from the outside. It's a four bedroom with four beds, two and a half bath. They're charging 160 a night. If you go back to the website, you can zoom in to specifically 
the exact street where, where it's located. There's a lot of activity in the areas that I just mentioned. But again, it's already very saturated. A lot of people have thought about it, but if you thought about it, there's been other people have thought about it. It's become very competitive with the housing market you know, for single family residential, first time home buyers, even people moving into their second home or downsizing. Inventory is so low. On the investor side, it is also really low. But this is a great tool. And I wanted to show you guys the activity and how much of it. It's not a ton, but it's an, a significant amount. I think this is a great resource. It is possible that you can find homes to invest in the previous neighborhoods that I just mentioned. And the reason that they're so lucrative, there's a lot of money being invested into Fort Wayne right now. They're doing the General Electric Works project. I think they're in phase three now of the Promenade Park. They're just adding more stuff downtown. I wanna highlight Pettit Rudisill now. Pettit Rudisill is on the southeast side. It's on the east side of Lafayette. And as you notice, there isn't any Airbnbs listed currently in Pettit Rudisill. That area, for investors, and I'm just telling you how the market is moving, not that I'm advocating for people coming in and buying up all, all the affordable housing and then you know, rehabbing it and then making it more expensive. Pettit Rudisill is more of a fix and flip type of neighborhood. As you can tell, there are no Airbnbs in that section. Just wanted to show you the differences between the two. Before we get into the 1% rule, I'm gonna break down the 1% rule. I wanted to talk about turnkey properties and what I think is the highest value add for people who are thinking about investing in Fort Wayne. Probably the easiest thing to do is get a turnkey property, a property that already has renters in place and they've been collecting rent. If you're not from Fort Wayne, you're not from in town, you're just going to randomly contact a realtor from whatever sources that you find this realtor at. The real value add is finding the realtor who is interested in helping investors. A lot of times, some realtors don't feel like helping investors, especially if they're just getting into investing. I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. Try to help you find these properties because it takes a lot of work to find a deal that's going to work. And really, they just want a quick commission. Me, myself, when I moved to Fort Wayne, I was doing contract work overseas, and I started looking at Fort Wayne eight months prior to me getting here. I was looking into house hacking. I'm a big uh, follower of Brandon Turner, Bigger Pockets, Active Duty Passive Income. I wanted to implement the house hacking strategy or find a home that was under market value that I can live in, do a live in flip type of situation. What I found is just remarkable is Frankie had an investor. She has a closing actually today from an investor in a fourplex. Once I became a realtor, you are going to come across people who are unloading their por portfolio. Those deals are found off market. They negotiate that before that house is put for sale. If you've been investing or you're thinking about investing, anybody will tell you some of the best deals you ever find are off market properties. But the best way to find off market properties is you have to know people who know people, right? Networking. We don't know everybody, but we've I've come across over the past year or so, I've come across three sets of investors that were unloading portfolio. Most of them were single family residential and they weren't that lucrative. They were okay deals. They weren't that great. And there's one portfolio, they were unloading a fourplex. And it, I mean, it was such a good deal. I thought to myself, people need to know that they can find turnkey properties that meet the 1% rule or more. Good return on investment. It was a group of investors from California. They put an offer in for one property, they didn't get it. And the listing agent just sent my wife the list of all the properties that way that they didn't have to search scour through the mls to find the other properties so now we had the list we had all this list, list of them multi-unit if you can get a fourplex at a good price it's much better than a single family residential or a duplex that's really the value add for investors and people who are looking if you're thinking about turnkey properties finding a property and how this works is when a property is listed on the mls Sometimes the listing agent will put in there that it is currently rented. In the agent remarks, which is not visible to buyers on some of the websites, it'll say how much rent is being collected monthly. And more so, they'll have the rent roll. Sometimes will be downloaded in the documents that only the realtor can get. And you can show that to your investors and say, okay, this is the rent roll they've been collecting for X amount of. So if it's a four and four, four bedroom, four bath, they can say, we're, we're renting out each room, each room, we got 500 a piece or whatever, whatever it looks like. So that way the investor can run their numbers if they need to run the numbers. And that's the value add. The value add is if you're looking to invest in Fort Wayne and you're looking for turnkey properties, 
before they hit the market or right when they hit the market, you can find all of them, run your numbers and get back because time is of the essence. You have to move really quickly in this market when it's a deal. That group of properties almost went in order from the best to the worst as far as the cash on cash return for the for the price. So the fourplexes went first, then the duplexes, then last is the single family residentials. That's what it looks like. Okay, before we get into the 1% rule, I just want to follow up on the previous segment. For those people who are looking into Fort Wayne to invest, to find turnkey properties, feel free to reach out to Frankie or myself. When these properties hit the market, you got to kind of be ready to go. And when people, we get notified that, oh, wow, there's some turnkey properties. If we are in contact with you, we can easily you know, show you the deal and give you all the information. What I wanted to do is go over the 1% rule for those people that are not familiar. I want to quickly just talk about Brandon Turner. He used to be the host of the podcast, uh, Bigger Pockets podcast. He talks about investing and this is how I got on my path. But the 1% rule is take 1% of the purchase price and that's the minimum amount of rent that you need to calculate to have to even start looking into the deal to break it down and see whether or not it's going to be a good investment. $100,000 purchase price, you need at least $1,000 worth of rent before you even begin to start dissecting the deal even further. This is Google Sheets that I created and I'll walk you through it. It's going to get really dry, but I don't know any other better way to do it. You put in the purchase price, $145,500, okay? Now it's going to automatically calculate your down payment. For this sake of this equation, we use 20% because you need at least a minimum of 20% down if you're going to invest in real estate with a conventional loan. Some banks want 25% plus cash reserves. Cash to close, I've already calculated that as 484. This is due 45 for the sake of math. So your remaining principal balance is just over $116,000. Property taxes, $2,083 a year, so $173.58 per month. The insurance is a rough estimate. Let's just say $116. So the estimated mortgage. Now here, here is actually something interesting. I hope I'm not getting too far into the details, but if you look in the upper left-hand corner here where we're doing the equation, I've been using 5.5 interest as the rate that the bank will finance you if you're doing an uh, investment property. I'm not really sure what the investment rate was. A couple months ago, you could you can get a, a loan for an investment and it was 4.5%. Um, but now for primary residents are at 46 or so, it's going to be up around 5% or 6% for rental properties if you're financing a deal. The macro, I've already put these things in. I want to um, draw your attention. I have 180 months. 180 months is a 15 year loan. So this deal changes somewhat if you do a 15 year investment finance deal or 30 year, but we're gonna do 15 for the sake of math. So we're gonna be more conservative and do what it looks like if you do a 15 year investment loan versus a 30. Right here is the monthly rent. This is what you're gonna get from a realtor. In this case, whoever's selling the rental property will have the rent roll. They can tell you how much they're collecting monthly. And so this was $2,140. So we've already taken out property management, which is generally 10% of the rent. So 214 bucks. Vacancy, you're gonna put this money aside. That way you have money just in case the renter you know, fails to pay or after a year or two, they move out. And then repairs is 0.5% of the rent. That way, just in case somebody puts a hole in a drywall or something, you don't have to go into your actual money. You just use the money from the renters to fix the property. This is the good way to safeguard yourself against vacancies and any um, unexpected repairs. I've already done the macros to calculate what your net, net operating cost is. You can see what it is there. Your cash flow from your net operating costs, you simply just subtract that from your monthly income. It's $363, which isn't a ton of money, but it's not a little bit of money either. And also you can start to try to figure out, okay, you know, is it possible that we can raise the rent here? And so obviously you raise the rent just by 50 bucks on each unit. It'll change that number. We have your net operating income, which I don't want to get into right now because it's just going to be too long and then your cap rate and your cash on cash return. Again, I don't wanna get into the cap rate and the cash on cash return for the sake of the video because I can go on an hour about that. But generally speaking, 
the cap rate varies. There's a, there's a lot of different train of thought on the cap rate, but 10% cap rate is good. And then your cash and cash return, 14%, essentially, is also is also good. This is a good deal. In this section, right next to the middle column, is if you buy it cash. Well, here, you, you if you notice, there's nothing in H2 because they bought it cash. Cash to close is $145,000. they are going to close out the whole loan. So they're going to spend $145,000 cash, which is what these investors did. They, they paid it off cash. So all they need to pay is the property taxes and, and whatnot. There's no mortgage. Rent is the same. Everything else is the same. Even your cap rate. It Notice you changed the cash on cash return because here you put $145,000, almost $146,000 into the deal. So you've tied up $146,000 of your cash. So you're only getting 10% back. So it'll take just over 10 years to get all of your cash back. So these are the numbers. These are the specific numbers. Once you start getting into real estate, trying to determine what is, what's a good deal, what's not a good deal, you can compare. If you have five deals, you have five properties with renters, how do you calculate which one is the best? Well, this is what you do. You come in, you run the numbers, and you know I, I do this kind of stuff. Obviously, it's not just about the greatest amount of rent. It's about how much money does it take to acquire the property, and a bunch of different other factors. And I just wanted to, to briefly go over that. If you guys enjoyed that video, please leave a comment and let us know uh, which part of the video provided the most value. And I can go more in depth into each one of those areas, the top neighborhoods to invest in. I looked into that area quite a bit. I'll probably do another video on just that alone. And then I quickly touched on short-term rentals, you know, Airbnb, VRBO. I could do a separate video on but whichever topic i get the most feedback about that'll help me decide which videos to create that's the whole intent of this channel is to bring content that's helpful to people in fort wayne or moving to fort wayne whether they're moving to live here or invest that wraps it up guys see you next time